Hi, my name is Graham Daniels. I'm a psychotherapist and an author. I write novels and also have a non-fiction app about drug treatment in adolescence. Though in today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of my blog entries. Sometimes I like to do uh, reviews of films, uh, old or new, that I think touch on um, matters relating to psychotherapy. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a film called Nymphomaniac. Uh, which is a film by a noted Danish filmmaker by the names of Lars von Trier, I believe I'm pronouncing his name right, who um, previously directed films like Dogville uh, back in the 90s, Breaking the Waves was a film that uh, really launched him um, onto the scene, uh, noted for uh, particular kind of realism that he brings to his films. Um, something of a, a provocateur in terms of themes. And Nymphomaniac is the last installment of what's being dubbed the Depression Trilogy. The previous two films, uh, Melancholia and a film called Antichrist, um, don't know the exact dates on those films, uh, released in both in the last uh, five years, roughly. And so Nymphom Nymphomania is a film, or Nymphomaniac, sorry, is a film about, as the title suggests, a, um, a lead character who acts out sexually, what some might call a sex addict, and the idea of sex addiction gets at least uh, addressed in the film. Uh, it starts out uh, with um, the protagonist, uh, Joe, who's played by a, a regular actress for Von Trier named uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg, who is discovered in um, discovered, beaten, and sort of brutalized by uh, this, this man uh, by the name of Seligman, who's played by uh, Stellan Skarsgård, the Norwegian actor, who um, takes her back to his home, which is a kind of a shabby, uh, dark little room. We don't learn much about the Seligman uh, character, but we learn about Joe, and we're going to learn about Joe a lot throughout the, the film. Uh, Joe refuses medical attention and even police intervention, though it's apparently she's been brutalized, and uh, merely wishes to uh, share her story and finds in Seligman uh, a trustworthy character. Seligman seems um, not as somebody who's going to further exploit or brutalize her. He is... Uh, something of a father confessor, perhaps has a kind of detached psychoanalytical um, air about him, uh, and he also seems sort of asexual, perhaps even uh, a eunuch. Um, Joe starts to uh, tell him the story of her sexual history, which is long, and in this film, which has been released in two parts, by the way, the viewers should know that, volume one and two, though it's been I believe shown at some festivals in, in, in its singular form. It's a four plus hour film and apparently originally close to a five hour film. And um, the the film is largely a, a confessional of this character Joe's with multiple flashbacks, particularly in uh, volume one, the, the first uh, half of the film. And Seligman is a disinterested, that is rather neutral, um, observer and listener, a good listener, and he is undisturbed. He's non-judgmental, if you like, about Joe's story. Uh, Joe recounts, and we see uh, sequences of Joe uh, as a young girl, teenager, perhaps early 20-something, um, competing with a rival over uh, how many sexual conquests she can achieve on a train with anonymous partners. Um, in somewhat darker scenes, we see her seduce a, an orderly in a hospital um, shortly after uh, observing her father, soon to be deceased, go into uh, delirium uh, tremens. Um, for to watch this film as a male is, is something of an uncomfortable experience because the film is not particularly flattering um, of you know, male sex, uh, sexual behavior, while it's um, largely about female sexuality. For, for Joe, getting laid is about as difficult as um, heading down to um, 
in the break room of this hospital where she's at in order to find uh, a vending machine. So uh, Jo presents with a lot of shame about her sexual behavior over her lifetime. We see her in the, in the present tense. She's a somewhat uh, maybe 40-ish, perhaps close to 50-something uh, woman, and it's clear that she's um, reflecting on a lifetime of, of this behavior. She's sort of shamefaced and also defiant at the same time. Initially, she um, presents as somebody who deserves to be beaten, uh, meaning she thinks she deserves to be beaten, uh, and therefore she, that's why she refuses the, um, the help. Um, and you know, says to Seligman that she has used people throughout her life. Um, at different points, however, she is um, defiant. She is disdainful of sentiment, outraged by the uh, hypocrisy of uh, moralistic society. In volume two, after she has um, sort of undergone an escalation of her behavior in the form of uh, uh, taking part in S and M rituals, a somewhat protracted set of scenes. Uh, she goes to a treatment program, and you, you know, as a viewer, you might wonder when was some kind of treatment intervention going to happen. But um, uh, Joe rather subverts the treatment experience that occurs. She um, rejects the term sex addiction, insisting um, on the term nymphomania, which Seligman, who's something of a scholarly, uh, bookish character. Uh, in, informs the, the viewer and Joe that uh, nymph refers to the immature sexuality of an insect. So if you like, this is a, a film, a story about the birds and the bees, but also insects. Um, anyway, Joe rejects the sex addiction treatment and after an initial experimental period of uh, abstinence and, and stridently walks out declaring, quote, she loves her cunt. So there's a defiance with Joe alongside her um, her shame at having used people. And that's not the, the only um, <clears throat> uh, stridency in the film. Uh, Von Trier uses either Joe or Seligman, the two main characters, as mouthpieces for um, other provocative statements to be made regarding sexuality and race, uh, sexuality and, and pedophilia. I won't go into those in detail. I invite the um, the viewer of this video to go watch uh, *Nymphomaniac*. It's it's quite a brilliant film, in my opinion. The two main areas that I would draw viewers' attention to as a as a psychotherapist is um, the quality of um, dissociation uh, in the character of Joe, particularly. Um, in the flashback portions of the film, the, the younger uh, and perhaps 20-something Joe is very much uh, cast or depicted as uh, a kind of not there kind of character, by which I mean very detached, um, seemingly disconnected, uh, distracted at the very least, even doltish uh, at times. And it's seemingly for these reasons why the elder, more mature um, Joe is reflective and seemingly ashamed of that, that quality. Um, and this dissociation is why she's able to be uh, exploitative of, 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 of the men in, 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 the, in the story. Though the film and in my own sort of experience of treating uh, sex addiction, there isn't a lot of attention paid here to um, the exploitation or the objectification of, uh, of men um, really when it comes to the um, attention to female sex addiction uh, men are not so much victims as they are sort of anonymous accomplices that just is a, uh, a standard that I observe. Um, perhaps the most um, uh, the central kind of uh, polemic that Von Trier as an amateur psychotherapist, an interested uh, psychologist himself, it has to make, has to do with whether or not Joe is a pathological figure. Um, the Really what Von Trier has to say here is a kind of Sigmund Freud slash Melanie Klein statement about how all human beings are sexualized from birth, more or less, rather than, say, uh, sexualized by trauma though there are hints that Joe's character uh, has been traumatized in her life. It's, this is a fascinating, multi-layered film, and I do uh, encourage viewers to go see it and check out my blog, 
on it, my fuller review of it, which is at uh, www.psychwriter.wordpress.com. My name is Graham Daniels, psychotherapist and author. Um, hope this uh, this this uh, video has given you something to think about. Thanks.